You know it's a party when Clarissa Shields joins us, and you know she is the quote, so it only makes sense. Scoopy Radio in the building. Ma'am, what's going on? I'm just in camp down here in Florida getting ready for my upcoming fight, Jim Bird. It's a big deal. You're boxing at Little Caesars Arena. Yeah, it's a really big deal. Um, I'm happy about it. You know, 15,000 people will be coming out um, to support me, to support Hannah, to see a great boxing match between uh, two great women. And I'm just excited to show that I am the greatest versus whoever. Have you ever had a fight locally um, that I guess your phone is ringing and everybody's talking about and you're trying to figure out the ticket situation while still stay saying at the same time? Yeah, right now. <laughs> right None now, it. it's been like that for, for most of my fights. When I fought in, I fought, I believe, in Detroit. I fought in Flint. I believe one time a piece already. So in those fights, people are always hitting me up for tickets and things. But, you know, I have like a, it's the order. So you have to go through, you know, best friend, manager, promoter. Like go through those people because... I'm not ever going to have tickets in my hand mm-hmm. giving them to people. Mm-hmm. She's got it organized, civilized, and it's a big fight. Hannah Gabriels and you go at it. What do you know about her? What do you respect about her? So me and Hannah Gabriels fought before. We fought in Detroit. Um, she knocked me down first round. She's a very strong girl, very experienced. Uh, right now, she's a four-division world champ, uh, and I'm a three-time division world champ. Um, you know, she thinks that because she knocked me down that I guess that that was the most that any girl has been able to show me that they can have any kind of dominance over me during that fight. She's the only girl in boxing to knock me down ever. Uh, only person really in my uh, whole life. So she feels like she got the edge and she's been boxing way longer. Like I seen her say something that, you know, that I have more experience than her. And that's not true. You know, when I fought against her the first time, I was only 5-0. and She was 18-1-1 one one with 10 knockouts. So I fought her in my sixth fight, and it was my second 10-round fight. And, you know, she got off on me. She didn't win the fight. I, I was able to get up from the knockdown and particularly, you know, come back. But she did have her moments, and that's why everybody is excited about this next fight because – She's strong, she's experienced, and, you know, she's coming to win. Flint, Michigan's own Clarissa Shields joins us on the program. And listen, um, I've always uh, been a proponent of your smack talking, and uh, people either love it or they hate it. Um, <laughs> but but I, I'll be honest, I feel like there is a double standard uh, when it comes to men doing it versus when women do it. Do you feel that people at this point – are more just accepting of it or do you just don't care? I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, women's boxing is a sport. It's no different than men's boxing. I'm a 13-time world champ, two-time Olympic gold medalist, three-time division world champ, faster than any other boxer in the world. And did I say three-time undisputed? It's a... I'm the only boxer of my kind. There is no blueprint to how you become the greatest woman of all time in boxing. There is no blueprint to how you make a million. Well, well, I just made a blueprint. Um, it's, now it's the blueprint of how do you make two million and three, and I'm also building that, you know? So I've been carrying women's boxing on my back, just being me while I'm, you know, enduring all this smack, while I'm enduring all these people judging me because women shouldn't do this and women shouldn't do that. Let me tell you something that blew my mind. You know, I don't know Angel Reese personally, but they make it seem like she's the first woman to come out and speak about trash talk, about how she's passionate about her sport, you know, how she's a competitor. I've been doing that for years. This ain't the first time that that's been done. You know, and I seen Candace Parker say that Angel Reese is her quote. Candace, boo. I'm the globe. I created that. That comes from me. <laughs> Angel Reese is great, but when you say globe, the name that pops up in your head is Clarissa Shields, the girl that whoop ass. So let's just get that out of there. But it just was like, 
Angel Reese has joined the fight to let us be ourselves and be strong women and be competitive and be passionate about our sport. But I've been that way forever. And I've been talked about and I've been called ghetto and not classy and ratchet because I trash talk, because I beat girls up, because I mean what I say, because I walk in a room and everybody know, oh, she's important. Like, I've been doing that. People have been intimidated by my greatness for a long time. So I was happy to see Angel Reese actually come, come out and speak up about that. But I've been doing that forever. forever? It's just that women's boxing don't get women's boxing don't get that same kind of clout that the girls in basketball get. But it's like I'm not the best in the country. I'm the best in the world, and I've been the best in the world for a very, very long time. You know what? You read my mind. I think if this boxing thing doesn't work out, news anchor is, is in your future because you segued so perfectly when you talked about <laughs> Andrew Reese. I mean that with all due respect. Um, when you saw that, did, did you watch the game? Did you see highlights when you saw it and the people were acting crazy about it? Did Was it deja vu? With Andrew Reese? Yeah, when, when LSU played yeah. and he was doing the You Can't See Me, was it like, oh, Listen, I, this I was like, yes. Yes, be you. Don't let them change you. Don't let them silence you. You ain't got to be nice. No, like, I think I actually posted a picture of Andrew Reese on my Instagram where I was like, I'm, you know, I'm Andrew Reese to you bitches. Because y'all can't see me. And yeah, put that ring on my finger. Like, yeah. Like, I'm the one. So I put that up. Also telling her, like, you know, congrats. But yeah, I, yeah, I watched the highlights. And um, I'm not, I don't really watch TV. But it was all over the internet, you know, and I just see like how like great she was. Clarissa, tell me something. Um, I've asked all a lot of boxers this more recently, and and and, I, and I'd have to give you the honor as well. Um, the WWE and UFC recently joined forces in some way, but did you grow up watching wrestling, and did you ever have aspirations of wrestling? So. Yes, I grew up watching wrestling, you know, The Rock with the eyebrow, okay? I love watching him. Um, there were some women I watched too, but I don't know their names. But I did try wrestling in high school, but we didn't have a coach that was consistent. This was I made boxing maybe two or three years at this time, and I wanted to learn how to wrestle just because, you know, it's another – it's another sport that's kind of, you know, um, about strength and power and speed. So I wanted to do that. And I knew that they would let, you know, girls wrestle against the guys. So in boxing, I boxed against the guys. So why not wrestle against them, right? So I went to practice maybe two days. And after the coach didn't really come to school, I was like, I don't want to do it. But I did go. The two days I went, I did the warm-ups. And then I just didn't like the whole being grabbed thing. Like, you know, I'm going against guys because of my strength. And I'm going against these guys and I rest. I'm like, I know how to, you know, keep myself from being taken down or, or at least trying to. Or I tried choke them or something. But it was like, I just wasn't not, like knowledgeable about the whole thing. So they would be grabbing my legs and my thighs. And that just made me uncomfortable. And it wasn't like they were doing it on purpose. It just was like, in boxing, you don't get to do that. So it was like, I don't like even being grabbed in those places. But in wrestling, they grab you everywhere, try to get you on your back. So I just feel like, ah, uh, not for me. <laughs> but the WWE would intrigue you if, if, if approached. What? Listen, they can call me anytime, okay? I would come in there with the half shirt on. I put my little tight, my, my little tight legging shorts on. And I will definitely go on WWE and I will, listen, I'm a natural entertainer. You know, I believe that I will have a part in the storyline and I will be all for it, you know? And I could take some of those girls. So yeah, WWE, call me. <laughs> Ronda Rousey made that transition from UFC to WWE and then took some time off and did what she needed to do, but we've never seen a boxer do it. Um, Ronda Rousey, have you met her? And what are your thoughts on just her as an entertainer and her doing UFC? Kind of like you, you've kind of transitioned to in some ways. Yeah, Ronda Rousey is a rock star. You know what I'm saying? She's the reason for um, women's MMA taking off 
Um, she's the reason that, you know, like she just kind of do her own thing. She was great in her own right. She fought the fight. She won some. She lost some. Won more than she lost. But she just, to me, um, kind of set the tone. You know, I think I met her when I was so many thoughts. I think I was 21. It was a talk that she did in New York. And they let us ask questions after she got done. And she knew who I was already. So she followed boxing. She knew, I knew that I had won the Olympics twice. And I was already always being compared to her already as far as in boxing. And um, I just remember like when I was talking to her, I asked, I said, you know, how do you do something that only you see? Like that only you know is possible. Like how do you do it when there's so many people that's doubting you? Because this when I was considering turning pro and she just said like, you got to, believe that what you're feeling is true you know and you got to do it and uh she talked to me about how nobody believed in the women's MMA but when she had her meeting with Dana she just wowed them you know and just proved her point so that made me um you know I, I've had meeting, meetings with the guys who run Rock Nation those that run Showtime um I've had meetings with those guys and that's the approach that I took like, look, you guys don't have to worry about who you match me up with. I'm going to win. It doesn't matter about their record or how many belts they got. You guys make the best fights. You guys put me on TV. I'm going to show you how it's done. You, you guys give me the cameras. I'm going to make sure people tune in and watch. Like, that was my pitch because I've always seen women's boxing being a billion-dollar sport. And right now... I am making millions of dollars, you know, and this was unheard of when I turned pro. Um, but I always felt that and seen that. So having that talk with Ronda Rousey, she just like, you know, go out there and just be true into what you're doing. Just work hard and always show them that you are what you say you are. And that is how I took it. Anna Gabriel's and Clarissa Shells, June 3rd, Little Caesars Arena, Detroit, Michigan. Before we get you up out of here, listen, um, music gets you through. Music moves the soul. <laughs> million dollar question. Two million dollar question, because it's a two-part question. What's on your playlist while you're training? What you coming out to when you when you fight on June 3rd? So on my playlist right now, I got some cash down. I got some lotto. I got some Coyle Ray. I have some Beyonce, Alicia Keys, um, what Lil Durk. Mm -hmm. um, who I got on? Uh, so many people I have. I, I'm 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 like I got gospel on there. Um, Mike Mike Junior on my playlist. Tamala Man. I'm like all over the place when it like comes to music. I don't just listen to just rap. I got rap. R and B, country, jazz. I really, I really listen to to old school. Like right now, I don't know if you heard Sherry. It's called it's called Murphy's Law, mm -hmm. and I love that song. I just heard it two days ago. It was this song came out in 1982. I don't know why it moves my spirit, but it does. So that's in my playlist right now. Um, just it's a lot of songs on my playlist. Some Tevin Campbell. But now to answer the second part of your question. I cannot yet tell you who is wrapping me out okay. in Detroit at Little Caesars, but just know it's one of the biggest and the baddest stars out of Detroit who wrapping me out. And um, I'm excited because women's boxing, like, I don't know when these girls will understand, but it's like, we're on the same level as the men. When you're a world champion, you undisputed, especially me, three-time undisputed. You come out, you pull up. In the Bentleys, in the Benz, in the Camaro, you you get wrapped out. You have a great walkout. You go out there and perform. Like I don't know why these girls are not understanding that that's part of our brand. But I'm actually enjoying the entertaining part of this. Like yes, I have to entertain inside the ring, but leading up to the fight, all that is just content, memories, legacy. It's record breaking. So. Some stuff these women have to get into, and I'm excited that when I get wrapped out, I'm going to announce it in a in a couple weeks. But when I get wrapped out, 
it's gonna blow your mind for sure. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I'm proud of you, girl. Thank you. You're welcome. Keep shining. Check her out. June third, she is in there like swimwear. I appreciate you as always. Of course, thank you. My pleasure. I'll talk to you.